Greetings subscribers and other curious persons. Welcome to another vlog inspired by the Goodreads Tuesday Talks group. This week's topic is, what did you think about really long series? I think, yay, more books to read. On a deeper level, uh, I don't like or dislike really long series. It's all down to how well the author writes the story. So something you get with a novella or a standalone novel is concision. It write, It's about a moment. If it's done well, that moment fills the book and you feel satisfied. If it's done badly, it feels kind of jerky in places or things you need to know are missed out. And at the end of that, you'll either know as much as you want to know about the world or you'll want to know more. As if you take a series, and the longer the series, the more it applies, the more you can learn about that world. So a long series is great for a world you really love. You not only want to know more, you can find out more by reading more books, but it doesn't have that concision. There's the risk of too many subplots, too much space allowing the author to not be as tight all of the time as they need to be. And to take an example of something that isn't really a long series, but a lot of people think displays this, The Lord of the Rings. The middle book, well, is it actually okay on its own? Or does it only work in the context of getting between the other two? It's, it's the book that people are least interested in. And if you then extend that to, say, The Wheel of Time, which is a long series, you get that feeling multiplied. Lots of people sort of like The Wheel of Time, but even people who love The Wheel of Time will agree that it's not focused on moving forward throughout every single book. You get to about book five or six of 14 book series, it starts to feel, well, it's a little bit nebulous, it's a little bit hand wavy. Could it have been squeezed down a bit? Which moves into the second issue of long series that either make it great or not, depending on how the author handles it, the feeding of information. If you take 14 books, Wheel of Time, writing one book at a time, someone who is reading those books as they are released has a year between them. So wants to know what's going on here, they won't necessarily remember what was three books ago, because that was years ago and they've probably read many more books since then. So you need to put the reminders in. But also, I have the entire Wheel of Time series on my shelf and I read quickly. So I could decide to sit down and read the entire Wheel of Time series one after the other. And I'd probably be cranking through a book every couple of days. So if the reminders are too focused on this book was released three years after the one that sets up this scene, so I'd better put in lots of detail. If I'm reading them three or four days apart, that's going to seem very repetitive to me. So the challenge 
that really long series propose. And if the author veers too much either way, the long series tends to fail. But if they hold the middle, it does really well, is having enough information for the people who don't remember three volumes ago, but not putting in so much repetition of the key information that people who do start to feel well, this is just going over the old thing, which is why I'm very divided on the subject of the epic fantasy prologue, the chapter length thing at the front of certain epic fantasy books, which is previously on Spoon of Spibble, and then sets out everything that's happened in the previous books, so in highlight, so you can skip it or not, is, on the one hand, that's a good technique to solve the refresh thing. On the other hand, I can't not read something. So if there's a epic fantasy prologue, at the start of the book, I'll read it. But it's not enthralling, exciting. It's headline notes. So, I don't know. I've, I'm divided on those. But uh, the other problem with that creeps in with really long series is idea creep. The books that I write myself today are different from the books I write, wrote three years ago. My skills have changed, my perception of reality has changed. I've had new ideas, so even if I went back and wrote one of the books again from the start, it would come out differently, even if I started with the same outline. And if you take 14 books, that multiplies up. So if I started writing a 900 page novel as the first in a series of five, I'd write that I'd probably have planned out the arc for the entire series and it would the first book would work. But during the writing of that first book, I'd have some ideas. During the writing of the second book, I'd have more ideas and a different perspective. And I might come up with a better idea for where it could go. And I might be able to change to this better idea. And in the third book, the problem happens again. But my leeway to correct is much smaller. So whilst an author could set out with a great idea for a really long series, the chances that during that really long series, they will come up with a better idea, but won't be able to implement it, increase with each volume which means the chances that the author will be writing something that they doesn't no longer think is brilliant will increase with each volume. Now, that isn't necessarily a bad thing. A good story can be a good story even if it's not the perfect story. But if the author doesn't think it's the best thing ever, then the chances that they won't quite have the same passion as they had in the first volume increase as well. So you're relying more on the author's work and less on the author's emotional investment to get it out. So a long series isn't necessarily going to be the same in terms of passion throughout, which again, needn't be a bad thing, but is something that could happen. And then, of course, there is the ultimate lack of passion, the long series of the author not finishing it, either because they no longer 
feel invested in it enough to bother or because they die. And so I'm invested in finishing the series, but it isn't complete and it's never going to be complete potentially. So starting a really long series at the first book on release is to an extent a gamble because whilst I don't have to finish series I won't if I get the first two books of a series out of the library and then discover that the library doesn't have the rest obsessively scour every bookshop online and in person to buy the rest of the books for every single series it does niggle at me so I might hold off on a series if it's predicted to be five volumes long until a couple of volumes have come out simply to save that investment turning sour on me. But that would depend on the standaloneness of my first point. If an author generally writes series where the books stand on their own, and Stephen Erickson's Malazan Book of the Fallen is a good example of this, not getting to the end isn't necessarily a bad thing. I mean, I, I suppose it's great to get to the end, but not being able to isn't bad in the same way. I read the Malazan Book of the Fallen out of order because I started getting it from the library. And I think the first volume in the series was the fifth one of the series I read because they really do stand on their own. They build on the universe, but they take bits within the universe that interlink and focus on them. So it's almost like a collection of history texts rather than a single story, which raises another risk reward with long series that even if the author can keep a tight rein on it that space they've got to explore the world that is something that might be a real asset is also the freedom from the constraints that stop the story becoming too complex for the reader to keep up even with reminders that if you consider the real world, if you take the start of World War I with the bomb being thrown at Archduke Ferdinand, you've got why Archduke, the thread leading up to why Archduke Ferdinand was a target, the thread of the terrorists leading up to why they thr threw the bomb, the thread leading up to why the attempted assassination of Archduke Ferdinand triggered the immediate war. All of the threads leading up to the results of that trigger. Real world history is hugely complex. If you try to track the story and how things build up, you're forever down the rabbit hole. So with real world history, you can't ever see the whole picture. There will always be some things left out. But with a 14 book series, if you're planning that, you can fit a lot in there. That's like a huge chunk of real world history, but it can gain the same real world diffusion of things happening and characters have their own backstories and more is slotted in and more is slotted in and suddenly you're considering train timetables and that can be great 
but also it can be, well, this was a story about heroes fighting in the trenches, but it's been an entire book since we got to that because we're on train timetables and logistics and it supports the narrative, but it's not the same story. It's not the story I started off with. But, uh, mm. but I've probably rambled my own five book series in answer to this question. So I'll close it off there. Toodaloo.